Thanks, Minister. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm fortunate enough this year to be looking after the police that will be looking after you on New Year's Eve. Um, right throughout this year, we've seen um, police uh, stepping up to the plate in extraordinary circumstances, as we know. Um, unfortunately, COVID this has changed a number of things that we've been able to do right throughout the year, and it's going to have one last change on what we do on the last day of the year as well. We know that there are restrictions still in place. Um, those restrictions relate to the number of people we can have at households. They relate to the number of people who can be involved or attending uh, parties or uh, licensed premises or restaurants. Um, but we need to be also thankful for the fact that uh, we are in such a good position. Um, thanks really to the cooperation and support of all South Australians that we still are able to celebrate New Year's Eve in this way this year. For New Year's Eve, uh, there will be a police out in force right across the metropolitan area and the regions as well. As usual, we'll be focusing on public safety and public behaviour, uh, particularly in places where people would normally gather at uh, this time of year, but also the, in the absence of major events and major fireworks. So we still anticipate people to be going to so the coastal areas and sometimes to the CBD. But we're also aware that people will um, likely take a more cautious approach and hold gatherings at, at households or homes and celebrate in a more subdued or quiet way. To make sure that we can uh, uh, keep people safe both in our public areas and within the suburbs, we'll be having uh, similar numbers of police uh, on duty right throughout New Year's Eve, but we will be more mobile. We will be out in the suburbs, we will be responding to calls for assistance, and we all, we'll also be enforcing COVID compliance. So that means police will be uh, ensuring compliance with businesses, but also ensuring compliance at private parties. So please, if you are hosting a private party, make sure you do so uh, within the restrictions provided by the directions. Uh, that way you'll ensure that you, your family and your friends have a safe and enjoyable New Year's Eve. This year, 35% of fatal crashes and lives lost have involved alcohol or drugs as a contributing factor. As such, as with each New Year's Eve operation, we'll be conducting a major drink and drug driving operation right throughout the night and into the early hours of New Year's Day. Please don't drink or drug drive. If you think you're going to avoid the police by delaying your trip home or by staying out a little bit later, don't be fooled. We will be out well into the morning on New Year's Day and if you do take a risk, you will be caught. Finally, um, we'd just like to remind people that um, we're here to assist you to have a good New Year's Eve. Um, we want, we understand that uh, all of us would like to park 2020 and start afresh in 2021, but obviously COVID doesn't operate by a calendar uh, and nor does uh, behavioural offences and the implications for individuals. So please enjoy your New Year's Eve responsibility. Um, I'm sure none of you want to end up spending the night with our, uh, with our police officers in police custody or I'm sure you don't want to spend the night in a hospital either. So uh, as I've said before, um, enjoy New Year's Eve within the limitations that we have this year uh, and, and uh, enjoy responsibly. I'll now hand over to uh, Rob Elliott from the South Australian Ambulance Service. Just as strict as you would be, say, tonight. Yeah, it, look, it is a challenging thing for us to um, ensure that people are doing the right thing by COVID compliance and social distancing. Uh, as I said before, one of the really pleasing things through this year is the response by the community and all South Australians about doing the right thing. So we implore them in the first instance not to forget that tonight. You know, we are still operating in the COVID environment with restrictions, so we do actually ask them to continue to cooperate and do the right thing. I think the other important thing is, is that we will have a number of operational police out just like we have had in previous New Year's Eves. Um, we'll, we will apply, continue to apply an education um, approach first but for people who blatantly do the wrong thing and continue to do the wrong thing, uh, they can be hit with a $1,000 fine uh, for breaching COVID restrictions. So the last thing we want is for someone to go home with a $1,000 fine or worse you know, on New Year's Eve. And when you are at home already, when you say you're going to be policing parties, are you literally just going to be driving up and down the streets looking for noise? Are you going off tip-offs? How are you going to do this? Yeah, look, I think um, there's enough people out in the community who are concerned about COVID to ring us up and let us know, you know when things are concerning them. So we will be responding to calls for assistance as we usually do uh, and part of our response will be looking at um, what is happening in, in private dwellings. We are, we are conscious that there will still be some people who are going to public areas but as I said before as well we're very conscious that uh, people are more likely to be um, uh, celebrating at home with friends and loved ones um, so we are prepared for that. We are uh, more mobile than ever this year. We will be responding to calls for assistance 
and people who are you know, hosting celebrations at home, if they are breach, in breach of the COVID directions, again, uh, we'll apply an education first approach, but uh, there's a limit. Uh, and if people who are blatantly um, disobeying the directions, uh, they'll be fined. Yeah, so we um, have ongoing COVID compliance in business premises uh, pretty much every day of the week. So it's a business as usual type of approach for, uh, um, for businesses and COVID compliance there. I think the other important thing for everybody to remember is, is that um, each business is required to have a COVID marshal. Um, and these people are employees, they're people who are just going about their normal duties. And I'd ask that people who are attending licensed premises or restaurants really respect the role that those people are playing as well because they're there to keep all of us safe as well. Um, but like I said, we will have compliance checks done on business as well. And, and I think the other important thing as well is uh, the QR codes. Now, really, again, encourage people to use the QR codes. Heaven forbid something was to happen, it just makes it so much easier for us to, to track people down and to be able to make, us, uh, make um, it safe again for us. Yeah, so essentially, um, with previous years, we have a similar operational response to what we've had. I mean, overlaying that, we have our COVID compliance and operations response in addition to that as well. So it's, um, we're trying to um, keep people safe the best we can for normal activities and what the COVID normal looks like. But we're also uh, out there making sure that people are doing the right thing by ensuring compliance, both from a business sense and also uh, from a public gathering sense, but also at the home. Assistant Commissioner, do you have any... Um idea roughly the percentage of officers that are going to be working tomorrow night either in COVID compliance or in general beat? Yeah, without actually um, going to a percentage, I think the important thing to realise is that uh, our police officers have gone above and beyond all year this year in relation to the COVID response. Um, it's easy to forget um, that we've still got police officers on borders uh, for New South Wales. It's sometimes easy to forget we've still got police officers um, keeping people safe in the Medi hotels and also through the airport system as well. So you know, more than ever this year, we've got more police officers involved in New Year's Eve, um, both through our operational response and also our responsibilities in COVID to continue to keep people safe. But not, necessarily, sorry, but not necessarily more police officers out in the field. You're saying all in all that we're more on, working on New Year's Eve because of the borders in the Medi hotel, but not more out and about on the table and the Elvin Heart Mystery. Yeah, I think uh, some people um, could be forgiven for thinking that we are um, stretched to the point where we might not be able to police the New Year's Eve normal activities or you know, I think even on some of the socials people are saying well how are they going to police my party in the suburbs? Guaranteed we have got a um, similar response to normal years we've got an additional COVID layer over the top of it so you know we're prepared for, t uh, for tomorrow night um, but also again um, the public has been so good this year they've been awesome in helping us out uh, in terms of keeping South Australia safe uh, one more night, um, perhaps one year without you know, the massive celebrations out in the public spaces or whatever. You know, it's just one more sacrifice. Unfortunately, I think it's reasonable for us to ask people to make. Just on Glenelg, um, with the no fireworks there, do, do you anticipate that people are going to gather there anyway? We spoke to Whole Pass Bay Council and they said they were working with St Paul. Do you think young teenagers are going to gather there anyway and drink? And are they allowed to drink? And are you deploying police there? Yeah, so there's um, declared public precincts in place for both uh, Glenelg and also uh, Heine Street, the West End as well. So, you know, that enforces or in, uh, engages a number of powers available to police to remove people from the area. There are also dry zones in place, and those dry zones are well known by pretty much everybody. Um, yeah, look, I fully expect it's going to be a lovely day tomorrow. Um, I fully expect some people to take advantage of that. I think they're mad if they don't. Um, but again, we ask them to do so responsibly. You know, it's, uh, it's one night in the year. Um, yes, it's an important night to celebrate. But like I said before, we've had to adopt, uh, sorry, adapt and change the way we've done things right throughout the years. Just one more night of just changing how we celebrate. Doesn't mean you, that you can't enjoy New Year's Eve any less. You just need to enjoy it a little bit differently. That's all. Happy New Year. Yeah, and look, fireworks is actually is a bit of a concern for us. Um, in the absence of major events and fireworks and um, the fact that we all love you know, a good firework on, on New Year's Eve, particularly at midnight, we are worried that the um, private uh, fireworks will be used, which is, of course, illegal. It's dangerous. 
uh, and particularly in regional areas, it has the potential to um, start a fire, a scrub or bushfire. Uh, I don't think I need to remind anybody uh, what was happening this time last year, and uh, I don't think anybody would want to be that person uh, that becomes responsible for starting a fire that you know, potentially destroys lives. Um, well, for, like for the public, um, for policing, it's changed um, how we police and what we police. It's given us new roles right throughout the year. I think those roles are, are pretty well worn now and, and well established. So it's a matter of um, uh, using those roles um, to police all the elements of uh, both New Year's Eve combined with the, the ongoing COVID environment. So yes, it's presented some challenges for us, um, but I'm comfortable that we've adapted. Um, Again, I'm really comfortable with the support that we've had from the community in assisting us to do that. Um, and I think that if everyone you know, applies that same approach and attitude uh, to New Year's Eve, um, I think we'll all be able to celebrate you know, in style, um, bring, hopefully bring 2020 to a close in the right way and, uh, and look forward to 2021. Can you just run through, um, say, officers do attend a party and there are more than 50 people at this um, private yeah, so um, in the first instance, we're going to apply an education focus. Okay, we, 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 um, we want people to be doing the right thing. We want to give them an opportunity to do the right thing. Uh, but where there's blatant disregard uh, for the safety of um, people in and around parties and the, and the safety of people generally, whether that be from a, a crowd behaviour or an individual behaviour perspective or whether that be from a COVID perspective, then we will be taking more affirmative action. And um, people who are blatantly disregard the COVID uh, directions can expect to receive expiation notices for individuals up to $1,000. Can I just get you to run through what the restrictions are for home gatherings? So for home gatherings, it's limited to 50 people inside or outside the house, uh, which includes kids. Um, it's for other premises, it's uh, the one in two square metre rule. And for uh, private gatherings outdoors, other than the home, uh, it's a maximum of 200 people. Uh, look, we're going to be out um, enforcing everything we possibly can, essentially. Um, but um, again, I come back to the point that I think that people have actually had the right mindset right throughout 2020. Um, all we're asking them is to maintain that mindset. Um, I think that if the past is any example, uh, the vast majority of people will certainly do the right thing, which will allow us to focus on those people who are not doing the right thing. And I think by doing that, we'll better keep everybody safe. I'm sorry, I don't have any details on that, on that particular incident. Any questions for the Minister? Everyone happy? That's it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.